Hi everyone, this is Perry from P2 Design. If you ever wondered how to make a game cinematic trailer in Blender, this video should give you some answers. From planning to the final compositing with these stylized FXs, see how we did the free-to-play game trailer for Noara, entirely rendered in Blender real-time engine Eevee. Let's dive in. We had a pretty low budget to make this trailer so it was entirely made by the team at Atypic Studio, except the recording from the voice actors. We knew we wanted to make something based on this illustration by Alexander, also known as Poon, where the king Aquiand is wearing his ceremonial fire dress. There was no script per se, but we had Aquiand's speech written down and we knew it would take place on the beach. So we started by building a rough block out of the environment in Blender, mainly focusing on the composition while Alexander, our concept artist, was detailing the design of the altar. The benefit of this method is you can quickly work on the animatic using Blender. We tried to define the rhythm of the different shots, as the trail wasn't action based since it was there to support the king's speech, and we had no time to build different sets. I used simple geometry and base mannequin for scale awareness. For the camera, I use the add-on Add Camera Rigs. If you want a deeper look at its functionalities, check out my animation course live. I have a dedicated video about it, and I use it throughout the whole course to create these different shots. With this rough animation setup, we were able to define the camera angles and what will be seen in the different shots. It allowed Quentin and Anthony, our modeling artists, to work on the altar and the rocks sculpting. Knowing the distance from the camera helps deciding how much detail these assets should be. They were sculpted in the brush and then decimated. The topology was automatically generated, as you don't need high quality topology if the mesh won't be animated. Textures were baked, and we created very simple materials mixing them with tiny rock textures. I added the sculpted details on the main rock by projecting a drawing I created in Illustrator and then I painted it in Blender to generate the beveled and cracked stone effect. If you want to learn more about my method, just ask in the comment and I'll do a more detailed tutorial about it. The very first shot was added later in the process, as I felt an establishing shot was needed to better understand the following events and where they took place. I used some of the assets done by the team, duplicated and distributed them here and there. To leave this specific shot, I created a procedural sky using nodes. It's close to the method used in my stylized sky shader tutorial, but I pushed it way further and then baked it to an HDRI as it takes a lot of computation to calculate such a procedural mess, while it's easy peasy for your GPU to work with a simple sky texture. I used the sun lamp as a key light and added a lot of specific lamps dedicated to each shot, mostly to create rim light effects. Another big challenge was the sea on the very first shot, as it's here to set the scale of the island, and it was hard to make it feel gigantic without adding a too noisy visual. It took me a while to find the right balance and method, but the setup is pretty simple, mixing a notion modifier with a procedural animated water shader. Then I played with a reflection prop to get proper reflection of the island on the water. If you want a more detailed tutorial about this, just let me know in the comments. As I was setting the different shots, trying to direct the camera, at first we recorded the King's speech ourselves, to get the length of the cinematic and to be able to start blocking the character animation. Most of the shots were animated by Adam, using the character rig we have in-game. He started with the blocking of the main body movement, and then added some lip sync and polished the whole animation for several passes while I was reviewing his work. Since we're working from home, we rely a lot on SyncSketch for the reviews. If you want to know more about it, check out my dedicated video. To deal with the crowd, we relied a lot on the NLA editor, mixing existing idle animation with layered motion, like a head turn here. I used the game locomotion animation of the birds and made them follow a path to get nice motion curve and support the composition. You can learn a lot about the NLA in this video. Another challenging animation effect was to make these tentacles follow the ground. I constrained each joint tweaker controllers with a shrink wrap modifier projected on the ground and then paid their motion. Drop a comment if you want to know more. All the different shots were part of a single Blender file. 
This allowed us to build a single animation for the main characters and have it playing on the different scenes. I could then play with the lightning and VFX for each of these scenes. To keep track of everything, I used a simple Excel file with colored coded status, like work in progress, to be revised, rendered, etc. We did our best to keep a solid composition in all the different shots. Like in the first one, where all the lines and the lights lead to the altar in the center. I used the bird shape to transition to the next shot, and the bird particle's direction helps us understanding where we came from and where we are going. A new character enters the shot, and then we switch to his point of view. The camera was animated so that we better feel that we are staring through his eyes, and a couple of characters give us a look before we gently touch our friend's shoulder, and he greets us with a welcoming glance. We can still see the flow of birds that helps us understanding our position in space. Most of the shots follow the rules of composition I explain in this video. Some of the VFX were done using simple shaders, like the fire on each side of the altar. I used the same method as in this video, and I rigged the plane with several bones, allowing me to burn it as if there was wind. I also constrained the fire rig so that the FX always faces the camera. On top of this, I added simple particle system to create the sparkles and amber effect. Since EV can't handle particle lifetime information, I used an object-based noise texture to drive their intensity, so that they flicker a bit. I could have used a distance-based system too. Let me know in the comments if you'd like to learn more about it. For the speed lines, I used the same method as in this tutorial. One of the most challenging effects I worked on was the impact on the gong. I've been practicing Enron VFX for about 6 months at the time I did this. We all love Arcane, and I did want to get the same vibe, but I wasn't sure it would please our CEO. And since I hated where I was going with mesh-based VFX, I took the Christmas break to animate this specific shot and learn Grish Pencil. I sent it to the boss, and he loved it. It was such a relief and an exciting time, as I was eager to do more FXs this way. The air waves in the beginning, the water ripples, all the fog FXs and the final dust cloud were hand-drawn and animated frame by frame with love and commitment by yours truly. In this regard, I wish I didn't make the mistake to animate this cinematic at 30 frames per second, instead of 24. It would have been less labor-intensive and would visually feel better. To better support the impact, I also made a heat frame in Photoshop. I isolated three frames, turned them into black and white, pushed the contrast and then hand-painted speed lines, stretching them from the impact point. I colorized them in After Effects and added some chromatic aberrations. Mixing convincing 2D VFX in my 3D animation is something that I'm really striving for, and I hope to create more content about it. There were small details I did in post-production, like the fire reflective in the eyes of the queen. Did you notice she was there from the beginning? If you spotted this little detail or made it to this point in this video, please leave a unicorn in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you like this content and ask for tutorials on specific topics that were shown. At this point, my job was done, and we gave the rendered and edited video to our sound team, Morgan and Gabrielle, who did, as always, an amazing job. I wish we had more time for this one, but I'm super happy of the work we did with such a tight budget. This is the end of this video. Happy mending everyone.